this discussion we will be talking about taps and mixes all the different types of taps and mixes that get there so to start off with the first ones you have are screw down taps you've got single lever mixes quarter turn head parts and then you've got an electronic tap with the screw down taps that mechanism is the one that you have to turn repeatedly to be able to open or close the tap completely whereas as the single lever indicates you have one single lever that works in on a cartridge that regulates your flow and the blend of water with the quarter turn is normally what we use for your medical or for easy operatable taps where it has got 90 degree arc that it moves through and it makes it very easy for people with arthritis, younger children and so forth. You don't have to really screw that tap down much. And then your electronic tap, there isn't any working parts there that the optic can handle. It's all inside. You have got a solenoid valve and the infrared eye that is the sensor there. So your screw down head parts, you'll see that we have two different ones. This one ends with a one and we can see it's a short head part. So if the head part has got a one at the end, it means that it is for anything that is external out of the wall. So within that you have got three different sizes. You've got your 61 head part, which is a 15 millimeter light pattern. You have got your 81 head part, which is a 15 millimeter heavy pattern or it's also used for the 20 millimeter light pattern and then you have your 20 millimeter heavy pattern head. So the one with the three at the end is then the longer one and that is for anything that is in the wall that's built into the wall. So the body is concealed, it's out of the way and the spindle has to be long enough to be able to come through all the tiling and the plaster and so forth and then the handle is on the external part of the wall. So the three at the end then signifies that and then your six, eight and nine indicates the size again as with the previous one the six is 15 millimeter light pattern, your eight is 15 millimeter heavy pattern or also for 20 millimeter light pattern and then the nine is the one for the 20 millimeter heavy pattern. The next one is the demand taps and we see that this head part, demand head part, will be able to retrofit on any 15 millimeter heavy pattern tap, except if that tap has been reseated. So reseating is recutting that seat, as you can see in the bottom left hand corner. If that seat has been damaged before, you can reseat it so that you make it nice and smooth. The only difference is it is now sitting a little bit deeper and a demand head part will not seal on there. A demand head part is as the name says, it is you hold the tap down while you are holding it, you are demanding water, so for as long as you hold it down, there will be water flow. As soon as you let it go, the water flow will stop. So there it is. If you push it down while you're holding it, it will continuously flow, but as soon as you let go, it will stop which means it is a non-hold open you cannot hold it open with just pushing it and let it carry you have to physically hold it open there by hand some of the fault finding on the tap if the head part does not seat properly it could be that the tap has then been reseated and you'd have to use another tap body there it could also be that it could be the wrong size if you can't get it into the hole at all it could be that you've got a 15 millimeter light pattern tap and it only works on a 15 millimeter heavy pattern. So your quarter turn head part, once again, as we said, it works through a 90 degree arc and it is normally used for medical taps. Yeah, once again, it can use on any 15 millimeter heavy pattern tap as long as it has not been reseated. So there it is there. As long as the distance from the shoulder of the tap to the seat diff is the same as the original and it hasn't been cut lower, you can upgrade it. Also, 
you can only do it where the spindle is in a vertical position as in the picture there and the handle moves through a horizontal arc because the handle is heavy if it had to be in the vertical with the handle that tap would start opening and closing itself if the head part does not seat properly it could also as we've said it could be that you have used a tap body that has been reseated or if it doesn't close it could be that the tap uh, head part the ceramics in there have become damaged and then they do not seal off anymore the Cobratron electronic taps as we said there's no moving parts there that little black lens in the front is where your infrared sensor is it would then sense that you are in front of the tap and then it would open and close the method that it works if you have a look at the top left hand corner you've got the C minus EL minus 4 that's your sensor that would then use power from your power supply even the tr either a transformer box or a battery box it would then take that power when the infrared sensors that you there and it would turn the C minus EL minus 5 which is your solenoid valve body it would turn that on opening the tap and causing water to flow if you do not want the battery or power supply right by the tap you can move it a bit further away it can be up to 10 meters away so you can use three of these extension cables they are three meters long each and the tap has got a one meter lead giving you your 10 meters there then do not cut and join these as your warranty will expire these taps the length of the flow time and the sensitivity etc can all be adjusted with the remote everything gets adjusted with the 13 key remote the EL minus X 8B the only one that uses the other one is the soap dispenser grower also have a lovely little product where you don't have to have a transformer box or a battery box this is the power box it has a little solenoid valve in there with a supercapacitor and a turbine so as the water is then now flowing through it it will charge the supercapacitor and that works as your battery you do need a little bit of a battery charge to start it if you have your first installation or if the tap has stood for quite a while then you need that initial power but once it gets used regularly your little charge there that you get from the turbine is sufficient to keep it powered up you also get this one the power box that works on blended water the previous one you would have seen was only for cold water this one you have your hot and cold water that blends in the tap it then goes down to the power box and the water flowing to the spout still goes through there so the same principle except this one is just the mixer is made specifically for blended water some of the fault finding we can just have a look at quickly if the water doesn't flow and the indicator light flashes continuously but the water doesn't flow it could be well it's most probably that your battery is too low to operate it so that little flashing light is telling you that there is life but are not enough if you do present your hand and the little red uh, indicator light does not flash then it means that either the battery is completely used up or it is not seeing you it could be that the range is too short it could be that it's gone into a security mode or the range is set too long and hence it's gone into a security mode so all these little things that one must just have a look at but all this information is in your installation guide when you do buy the tap if the red light and the sensor flashes once when the user steps within the sensor range it could be that the connector between the power supply and the solenoid valve has become disconnected so the there's power on your little infrared eye but it's not getting it through to the solenoid valve if it does not shut off it could be that there's dirt stuck on the seal on the diaphragm and it's not shutting off or it could also be that it used its last bit of power to open up and it now doesn't have enough to shut off again 
The next one we're looking at is the rough brass garden taps. There are three different head parts and sizes there again, your 15 heavy pattern, 20 heavy pattern and your 15 light pattern with the numbers that go with them. You'll see the numbers do not follow the same convention as with the other head parts, the screw down head parts. The older taps you will see have got a gland like in the bottom right hand picture. As long as there's still thread exposed there you can tighten up if the water is leaking out next to the spindle it will collapse the gland, the graphite gland and make a seal again. We have upgraded the 15 millimeter light and heavy pattern ones and they now have a o-ring seal in there so no need to nip glands or anything anymore. So we'll see your rough brass garden taps have got what we call a rising spindle. What is rising spindle? If we have a look at that area over there you'll see when you open and close the tap it gets longer and shorter so you can actually see the head part rising as you're opening it and shrinking as you're closing the tap. For single lever mixers we have got the main cartridge size that is used is 35 millimeter in that you have got your raised base in the top and the flat base in the middle. The cartridge size and the method of operation is exactly the same. It's just your porting configurations that are different. So on the shorter one, the flat base is normally for kitchen mixes, that type of thing where you are restricted for space. And then your raised one would be the outlet is directly to the spout and you don't have a problem there. You will see that there's an o-ring around the body of the cartridge so it keeps the water down to that bottom little section. Whereas the other one you'll see that looks like all three ports have got rings around them that's because the porting is directly there it doesn't open up into a blending cavity. The Last cartridge there you'll see is the same size, 35mm, but it's a different colour. The reason for this is it's got some extra features on it. It's got the red ring around it, which is a limiting ring. You can move that to restrict how far your blend goes to the hot water side, so you will never get just hot water. It'll always be a blend. It's not a thermostatic ring, so if your cold water had to disappear altogether, but you've still got hot water, you could still scold yourself but as long as there's hot and cold water connected you will always have a blend. If the flow from the outlet to the tap is too strong you've got that little allen key grub screw in there you can adjust that which prevents the tap from opening completely and thus prevents any splashing on the basin. Some of the fault finding on your single leaves if it leaks through the outlet, it is a dirty cartridge or a damaged cartridge. If it leaks from the body, that o-ring that we saw on the side of the cartridge, it could be that that's faulty, or it could be that the cartridge itself is loose. If you do not have enough hot or cold water, it could be that there's a blockage due to some obstruction on the cartridge, or it could be that the flexi hoses have then got kinked or something and it's restricting the water flow. The next one is thermostatic mixers. So one of the things about the thermostatic mixer is that it reaches the preset temperature very quickly. We have the turbo stat which reaction time is 0.3 of a second and the normal cartridges are 0.6 of a second. So even the longer 1.6 is fairly quickly that it reacts there. The grower ones have also got the grower cool touch which keeps it nice and cool so that you will never burn yourself on there. It will never get so hot that you will burn. They are all factory preset at 38 degrees Celsius and your bottom two pictures there have got an override safety button so you cannot accidentally turn it to the too hot it'll stop at 38 degrees Celsius. The top one being an industrial mixer will normally be plumbed out of the way where the user will not see it. 
you can also lock it there are lock rings inside and you can lock it to whatever temperature you want it just means it's not user activated it is preset to whatever you want some of the fault finding if you have the mixer that's not blending properly you will have most probably that the cold water is ported to the wrong side it must always be to the side where the dial is on your big industrial mixer on your exposed grower ones it is your normal water configuration where you have got hot water on the left hand side cold water on the right hand side so again insufficient or no water flow it can be that the strainers are blocked or it could be that the fault isn't even at the mixer itself it could be downstream at the shower roses or something that it is not getting enough water through it's not warm enough it could be that it's incorrectly set it's not calibrated properly or it could be that the actual installation's hot water has cooled down to a point where you cannot get it hot enough because remember a thermostatic mixer cannot heat the water it can only control what goes through it if you're getting water hammer when you're opening and closing the terminal fitting it's most probably loose piping or there could be air trapped in the pipeline or it could be that the pipes have not been sized correctly and the water velocity is too high on the ends of your thermostatic mixer your KD the big industrial one there are little holes on the end of the cartridge and the blending handle if there's water coming through there they have worn out and you need to replace the cartridge if you have any further questions or you're not sure about something that was mentioned by all means grab hold of our number there 0861 21 21 21 and our after sales support will gladly help you thank you for paying attention